Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 119 of the I Rock Knits podcast. Hello, I Rock Knitters. Happy Easter. We went to Easter Sunday services this morning, and then we went out to breakfast at the original Pancake House. Um, I had pumpkin pancakes. They were delicious. I love that place. They do have gluten-free options, which is lovely. Um, they were not very busy. We put our name on the wait list, and when we walked in, we were escorted right through. Um, it is a spring day here, finally, in Minnesota, and it is very windy out, but it was 55 degrees. Yes. <laughs> so people had bare legs. I had on some leggings underneath my dress, but I am wearing my new Gudrun Johnson um, dress, my Easter dress, and I left it on. Um, it's kind of like a little sweater material, and it has, I don't know if I can show you but it had yeah so it has all my favorite colors in it and I was like oh I have to get that it's got three quarter link sleeves and the puppy tore it in the back this morning already so I have a little repair to do on the bottom hem I will show you a picture of him he is growing like leaps and bounds our little Chevy um we had a puppy trainer over yesterday um, to help us with some behavior issues that I am having with him. Really likes to jump up and bite at me. Um, so I got a new strategy for that. He is getting overly stimulated. We're doing too much too often. He's not in his crate enough, not resting enough, but she taught him how to sit, how to lay down, how to uh, target, which means he comes up and bumps his nose on your hand, and then also to shake. So Ross and I practiced sit and down and target today, this morning when we got home from church, when we were outside for a few minutes. Um, and it's, yeah, it's going really well. So he's a smart little puppy, maybe stubborn. Burmese mountain dogs are known to be, um, can be a little stubborn. Um, and poodles are very, very smart. So it depends on how much of what he got. Um, but he is a darling joy. In the morning, every day, I wanna give him away. And in the afternoon and evening, I just love him so much. <laughs> He just wakes up with a ton of energy. We're having a little problem with potting in the crate, and um, so we're working on that too. Um, he's not making it through the night, and we wake up with a poopy crate in the morning, and his crate's not too big, and I don't really need a whole, a whole bunch of um, suggestions from everyone. We have two people that we're working with, and um, most puppies don't like to poop in their crate, so either we're not hearing him fuss or he's not fussing, um, cause I take him out about midnight and he poops and pees and my husband gets up about six, five, five AM to five thirty, and he's soiled his crate twice in the last few days. And we had upped his food. So maybe it's too much food. Cause the vet thought since he had gained so much weight. Anyway, it's all puppy all the time around here. It's just been crazy, but I am going to start today with a little Corey's stories. Um, I had a rough week this week. Any of you who follow me on Instagram or on Facebook will have seen what happened, um, but I was having some jaw trouble. I mentioned it on the last podcast. My jaw was um, sore and off, just off center. I had never had any problems with TMJ or TMD, anything like that, but I did go into my doctor for a just an exam and I mentioned it to her. So she felt of it and everything. And she said, oh yeah, it's definitely slipping. Um, she sent me to the facial pain clinic. So I couldn't get in for a couple weeks, but I went down and saw him last end of last week. And he put me on a muscle relaxant and said, yes, it's definitely just off just a tad. It wasn't, it was bothering me because I was biting my lip. So he sent me to physical therapy. 
um, for six visits and then I was going to go back and see him. And on Monday, I went first thing on Monday morning and saw a physical therapist and she adjusted my jaw um, and things went horribly wrong, horribly wrong. I do not look too bad anymore. It was really yellow yesterday, um, but I will put some pictures in here. I will first put some pictures in of Monday when I was started getting concerned as I was on my way home and her adjustment really hurt. Like it really hurt and she didn't let go. She put her little finger up in the corner of my mouth and it was super tender back there. And I, I screamed out twice in pain and she kept going and, and, um, and then she did the other side and then she came back on this side again. It, it was just, anyway. So on Monday night, when my facial pain, pain clinic wasn't calling me back, I thought, I'm gonna ask on Instagram. I got a lot of followers, someone out there, some physical therapist, dentist, chiropractor, somebody will know if this is common, right? Like, do you get swelling after this? Like, is it normal for me to get swelling? And I was in significant pain. I could not open my mouth very far at all. Um, it, and it didn't feel better. <laughs> uh, and then on Tuesday morning, I woke up and it was gigantic. It was stretched so far. My glasses weren't sitting on my face correctly. Um, and the facial pain clinic called me back first thing. I didn't realize that they close at 2 p.m. So when you call at 2.30, they're not going to get back to you till the next day. And I... I could have gone to the ER, um, but I was just taking ibuprofen. So they got me right in on an emergency appointment that morning and he took one look at me and was fairly distressed <laughs> and said, um, do you feel like she was too aggressive? <laughs> I was like, yeah, she was too aggressive. So we uh, put me on a steroid pack to get the inflammation to come down. Um, and most of the day, Tuesday and Wednesday, I was really still pretty darn swollen. And then I started getting bruised and I got super black and blue Wednesday and Thursday. Um, yesterday I was yellow and green and today it's really drained. Like it, it almost is gone. You can kind of see it, but it's almost gone. Um, I can open much better. I was talking like this. I can open to about right there. So I can eat and I chewed last night for the first time. Um, and uh, so I hadn't been, I've been eating more soft foods. It was just a really horrific experience. But a lot of first, first people's first reaction um, to me of friends and family and even um, on Instagram was, you gotta sue. And that is just not in my nature. I, um, everyone makes mistakes. She should never do this again and I will file a complaint and I will talk to a patient advocate. I did talk to her twice on Tuesday and she said this has never happened before. Everyone I've talked to have said that they've never seen anything like this before. This has never happened before. Um, I have friends who have chimed in, um, thank thankfully, um, but I will be talking to her. I asked her if I could send her pictures because I, you know, when you tell someone you're swollen, I don't think they really realize necessarily that I looked like I had had a stroke and that I had six golf balls in my mouth. Um, and she said, no, I don't think you can send me pictures on my work phone, but I need her to get pictures because then I think she will realize that it went too far. It, it was extraordinarily painful. I am very tough. I mean, I've had two knee replacements, so I've lived through a lot. Um, you know, and childbirth and hip replacement and thumb joints and lots of gymnastics pain. Um, but this was, this was just beyond. But I thought at the time laying on the, the thing, this is what maybe you have to do to get it back in, right? Like maybe you just really have to, I've never had an adjustment from a physical therapist before. Um, I thought we were maybe going to do ultrasound and massage. <laughs> I didn't know. Maybe some exercises. So it, it was a really rough week. Um, my parents came on Monday. My mom had her three-year spinal fusion checkup on Tuesday. They did drive up. I blessed them. They got in the car and drove the four hours up here. You know, they're getting, my dad and mom are getting older and that's a long trip. Um, and so they were here while this was going on. We had the puppy. We got a new furnace on Friday. Um, our furnace had been intermittently overheating and underheating for two weeks while we got bids and 
yeah, it, it was just a very, a very challenging week. And I'm trying really hard to just be upbeat beat about it. This is getting better. It's, you know, it's probably fixed. It's still a little off, but I don't care. Um, I go back and see him again. He wanted me to come on Friday if things weren't better, but things are much better. I finished the steroid this morning. I did one of those six, five, four, three, two, one packs. But I know a lot of you have sent me messages and asked how I was doing. And so I just wanted to chime in right away and say, it's much better. It is the, the just a little bit of, I looked pretty rough there for the whole week. Um, I didn't really leave the house or I didn't do much. I was had a headache. I had a terrible headache from it. And um, so I was taking ibuprofen, which upsets my stomach. So I switched and yeah, it was, it was just a lot. So thank you for all your well wishes to everyone who chimed in and said, my husband's a dentist, my wife's a PT, my whatever. Um, and no one, I'm going to show them pictures. No one had ever, no one has ever seen anything like it before. So something, something went horribly wrong. Um, but we're on the mend. Uh, I have a few things to talk to you about today, but I didn't get a lot of knitting done. Really, since the puppy arrived, I have not been knitting as much. We're really just working really hard on getting him potty trained and taking him out a lot and getting him to bond with us and, and doing those kinds of things. So, um, And I've been doing some computer work. I have been <laughs> cleaning out my iPhone phone photos because I was sitting in the chair and so I was just scrolling and deleting and uploading to my computer where I was putting things on Ravelry. And so I know some of you saw me all of a sudden like, why is she posting all these pictures? So as I was um, putting pictures of things on a mannequin on the podcast, I wanted to upload those new photos to Ravelry because I have a lot of flat lay photos on Ravelry of old sweaters and stuff like where I just lay them on the ground and took a picture back in the day because I didn't have a mannequin. So now I have mannequin pictures. So I was trying to kind of upload those and I'm teaching next week in Colorado. I was really worried about my mouth and being able to talk. Actually, this is already a little sore. Um, so we're leaving and I wanted my Ravelry samples to be relevant over there. So I, I was doing just a lot of getting ready for this big trip. And I'm so happy that some of you are coming to take my classes. I, I didn't know until I started sending out my handouts and my lists. Um, there's still quite a bit of, of availability in four of, out of five of my classes. They're not quite full. Um, so if anyone has a last minute need to go to Loveland, Colorado, or you're in that area and want to come take a couple classes or a class, um, I do think that going to a yarn event is expensive and Yarn Fest isn't inexpensive and the classes aren't cheap, but we really do have a good time in these three hour classes and you learn a lot and it's a lot of fun. So um, yeah, I just wanted to catch everybody up right away here at the beginning. Um, the patterns featured this week at the beginning of the podcast were the Concord Pair Socks from my Pairs of Socks collection in DK and Fingering Weight, which are lovely textured sock patterns. And then my Corey Stories Cowl, which is super fun to knit. If you want to try a new technique, that has just a teeny tiny bit of indarja in it. And so you might want to give that one a try. Do you have a video for how to do it? You just switch colors. It's like starting a new color on a striped row. It's not difficult at all. That's a very fun cowl to knit. And it didn't get a lot of love. Um, and then I have the dog words cowl and the dog words hat this week because, you know, new puppy. So if you have a dog lover in your life and are looking for a Christmas gift, for next year and you already want to start knitting you know gift knitting or if you're a dog lover and you want a new winter hat the dog words hat and cowl where it says feed your dog walk your dog <laughs> they're really it's quite cute so um those are the featured patterns of the week i have a new sweater to share this week this is my napoli sweater this was some of my oldest yarn stash remember i told you that i sorted my stash on Ravelry. I'd updated everything and really taken a good look at it when I kind of th threw my stash a little and checked through my closets and was just looking through my bin bins and seeing what I had. And then I sorted by the oldest to newest on Ravelry and looked at some of my oldest stash and said, wow, you know, because you look at it all the time, I think it feels fresh. It's like when you're in your closet and you're you haven't worn something for a long time, but you don't realize you haven't worn it because you see it every day because it's in the front of your closet kind of a thing, right? Like you just see it all the time. 
um, that's kind of how it was with my stash. Like I didn't realize that this was old. So this is a cotton ruffled high low hem um, sweater called Napoli. It's by the Barocco design team. It's quite cute. Um, I'm going to be wearing this like long white shirt underneath. It has quite um, full length, not quite full length sleeves on it. And then it's quite full in the back. It has like some drape here. You can kind of see how it has some increases here. And so it's just kind of drapey. So it's almost like a little over jacket. Yeah, I think it'll be cute over a dress, um, be cute over a tunic, and then this white shirt. It's knit at a fairly large gauge, and uh, it is this cotton yarn, but I'm sure you could work it up in anything. Oh, it has two by two ribbon here, a little placket, and then it has a little uh, stitch here, and then you just go down. Yeah, so I think it's very cute. Kind of a whole different, it, it, it kind of looks like a pregnancy top and I'm hoping that even though I'm bigger on the bottom, that's not what it looks like on me. I think I'm old enough that people won't think that, <laughs> right? <laughs> she wearing a pregnancy top? I don't know, I think it's kind of cute. I'll wear it over my Goodwin uh, Shoden dresses and just rock it, right? Who cares? But let them think I'm having a baby. I'm not sure if you'll remember that I purchased this Gigi Made It yarn um, and it came in a little box and it was orange on orange striping yarn and I decided that I didn't want to knit socks with it. I have way too many pairs of socks and I don't wear them enough. I'm a slipper girl without socks around the house mostly and um, so I decided that I would do just like a scarf or something, cowl, hat, something with it. And I was out on Ravelry looking around at the projects to see what other people had made with this yarn and someone made the clap of tea. And I love that pattern, right? So that's what this ended up being. The fingering weight, um, unique yarns in the orange on orange GG colorway in two skeins. So I had to buy another skein and I got it from Nitty City in New York, I looked online and it came up and I, I love Nitty City. I've been there a number of times. Um, we even spoke there when we first wrote the book, um, had a little book event. So um, I like to support that and I bought an extra skein and then I'll hold this up. So it's normally knit in a much heavier gauge yarn, but it's got these dropped rows so it's really fun to drop all those stitches down. It's knit on the bias, so it kind of has an angle here at the end. And yeah, I think it turned out just perfect, right? It's lightweight, it'll be just great for spring, right? Spring for Cory and orange and whatever. And I can, I can do all my little fancy. I forgot to put up a shawl for, for shawl Sunday last week. Um, I just, you know, had a bad week. My parents were coming, the puppy, I don't know. Things were going on and I just forgot to put up Shawl Sunday. So then I did put it up this week and I just tie, tie shawls in all the different ways. Any way that I can tuck and I just keep tucking and wrapping. So I tucked over and over and then I get a double. I'll do this one next time on Shawl Sunday. Today I'll take a little video of that. <laughs> so I just keep tucking and wrapping and you know, Throw it over your neck. I feel like Amelia Earhart, <laughs> right? Oh, I'm so old. I'm so old, right? <laughs> okay, so that's the clap of tea. Did you all see how that stitch patterning works? So you have just some stuck in it. And then this is just a stitch. And then you just drop this one and it drops on the bias. And that is so fun to run that down. So I have a black clapotee, a black and brown clapotee, a pink and purple clapotee that are all knit in the heavier weight yarn. But because it's knit on the bias with these open stitches, it just really, you know, it really just folds up to nothing. I could probably even <laughs> do this as a really cute headband, right? Hippie girl. 
there you go. Should do the rest of the podcast this way. I used to be a big headband girl. I wore headbands all the time. But I wore them like a disco queen under my bangs. <laughs> I guess I'm being a little silly today. It's the lack of sleep from being on a steroid <laughs> and wanting to eat everything in sight. So I've been really good at trying not to eat everything in sight. But yeah, the steroid is, does wreaks havoc on the rest of your systems, right? Okay, finished objects. What did Corey finish this week? The one thing I did get done is another sachet. Isn't it cute? I have been watching Amy Best since her first episode. I love that woman. She's super smart, very clever. I love that she made a business for herself and that she is still podcasting. That is why she's getting this pill. So don't tell her it's coming. I'm gonna put it in the mail today. Um, Someone who can hang in there and podcast for that long. I think it's 10 years. That's incredible. I know that it's part of her business and she's sharing her bags, but she started out as the Fat Squirrel Speaks. Some of you will not even know that she had Fat Squirrel fibers for a while and she dyed yarn. And then that was difficult in her house because she had a small house and an unfinished basement, I think. Um... So I think she was using her kitchen. So then she just went to sewing bags pretty much exclusively. And when I first started watching podcasts, so it would have been in 20, I'm going to say 2013, um, her daughter Tova was going to kindergarten in her early episodes. And I think it was like episode three. I've talked about this before. They went to the park and she saw a homeschool woman, Angel, going frolicking in the fields with her children. It's a hilarious story. Um, but she was very nervous about sending her child off to kindergarten and whatever. And I sent her a plant on the first day of school. I felt like I had been watching her long enough and I knew her personally. Like some of you feel like you know me. And I sent her a lucky plant, one of those uh, Chinese like bamboo lucky dollar plants or whatever they're called and just said, you know, good luck today and whatever. And I mean, that's been her daughter, what is Tova, 16 now? So yeah, anyway, ah, the fat scroll speaks. So this is going in the mail to her and then I will be picking another podcaster. You know, some of these people who have two and three or four people on their podcasts, it'd be really hard for me to make a sachet for all of them. So I will be picking another um, podcast person to send another pillow to here. If I can keep knitting up little sachet pillows, I will do that. If you want a chart made, I did have someone get in touch and had me make a chart this week. If you want a chart made for the sachet with words on it, someone's last name, um, someone's children's names, um, a grandma could have all of her children's names on a pillow, um, a mother could have all of her children's names, or you could have your last name, you could have the year you were married and established, or, you know, whatever, an engagement date, or I'll make the charts for you. So you just have to get in touch. That's um, That information is on the front of the pattern. Okay, don't tell my checkbook, <laughs> but I got yarn in the mail. Ooh, imagine that. And guess what color it is? <laughs> I bought the Mayak yarn to make that hat that I showed two podcasts ago. I'm super excited about it. I just couldn't stop looking at that hat pattern. So the hat is called A period N period T period for a new take and it is by Amy Debon and it is being modeled by Paula of Mayak Yarns and you, this is Mayak Baby Yak Lace. So this is lace weight yarn. So you get a ton of, of yardage fitted up. Uh, you, I got 380 yards in this little skein and you hold it double and then you fold the brim over and knit that. So I'm thinking I will cast this on and knit it on the plane to Colorado this week because I think it will be an easy, small project to take with me. But I have a couple things on the needles that maybe I could also take that would be small for the plane. So this might I might wind this up and, and get that cast on. It can be my purse knitting going forward. It, I don't really need it now until next, but the colors, like they just hot pink and, and orange. So I had to purchase that. Um, I can't remember what I paid, but it, it wasn't cheap because Yak is quite expensive. 
If you're not a, if you're not aware, Mayak was born of more than 20 years living and working with the nomadic herder, herders of the Tibetan Plateau. Our activities are equally imbued with care for people, animals, and the environment, as well as for the social and ethical values that characterize our in entire chain. The fiber is hand combed from the soft undercoat with no harm to the animals. So it's ethically sourced, 100% traceable, expertly crafted and naturally soft. And I will agree, it's very soft and it does provide uh, an income for the Tibetan people. So to me, then that is just such a value. And then the second thing I purchased was I, when I went to South Dakota a couple weeks ago, I went into the new yarn store there, Prairie Road, um, and um, saw a little sweater. And I have a new grand niece gonna be born this summer and there is a baby shower coming up. And I saw this little sweater and I thought, oh, that would be fun to knit a different sweater. I've knit a ton of baby sweaters over the years and I thought, okay, I'll buy that. Well, then I, when I went to Ravelry, it was only available in a book. And I was like, oh darn, I don't need another book. But then I looked at this book by Marie Green and I decided, okay, I'm gonna purchase it. So I bought the book, it's called Knit a Little, and it is 24 seamless patterns for children's sweaters and hats. So it is a ton of patterns. It is, um, includes beanies for the whole family. I think there are like 12 sweaters and 12 hats, boys and girls, um, gender neutral, color work, plain, um, stockinette. This is the little one that was in the, in the shop and it was done in like a gold. It was really, really cute in a tinier size. Um, so I think the baby's born in July. So I'll probably make like the three to six month because then, you know, they can wear it in the fall maybe. Anyway, so I purchased the book. It's lovely. It was um, on her website. And Marie Green is the founder of Olive Knits and Knit Camp. So she has a knit camp. I, some of you are probably very familiar with that. She runs it through Facebook, I think, and they do activities together and knit alongs and all kinds of different things um, through her knit camp. It's very popular, um, but you do have to purchase like a subscription or a membership to be a part of that. There are just a ton of, of really cute hats in here. And so, yeah, I thought, well, I'll support another designer and purchase her, her little book. So those are the two things that I purchased this week. Last night, after finishing the Fat Squirrel Speaks sachet, which I really wanted to get done, and it was still wet, and I was, but I made the pom poms and got it stuffed for today. Um, I thought, okay, I'm going to pick up a, a whip for an hour here while I was knitting last night. Finally, knitting, and I had put Chevy in in his crate in the back so room. I was working on my brioche slipover. It's almost done. It's so close. It is in that chunky blown design. It is a cropped um, cropped top that I will wear like a tunic or a dress underneath. And so I just have a skein left to work and I'm doing this brioche in the round and I have decided not to probably pick up a round and I'm just going to turn these in and fold them over and make a little, make my own little edge on there because they're awfully wide in my shoulders. But yeah, it's almost done. I had tried it on just to see it because I want to hit that sweet spot of where I go in and then I start to go back out again. Because if you go past that, then you just look really boxy. And I, I usually wear lots of things long and I and like oversized. And I do think that that makes me look bigger than I am. Um, and I'm not delusional that I'm not bigger, but um, I don't care. <laughs> I like to be comfortable. But this one I thought I will keep short. So I just have this much left to kind of knit up on the bottom of that. And it goes pretty quick. So after I'm done, I will probably sit down later today. Um, my husband loves to watch the masters and they got rained out. So, okay, now they have to make it all up. So that's his favorite thing every year to watch. So we'll probably sit down and watch a little bit of the masters. Let's do a little peek behind the curtain, what I am designing. I am working on the bobber hat. So I wound the yarn for the bobber hat. That's the one with the little red and white bobber on the top. And I'm going to also do a jangle button hat for um, kids. And so I'm going to work on those two. I got yarn from B, uh, from Wounds and Nosh for that. So 
great yarn support. I'm also going to be doing another collaboration with her. So I want to get those two hats off the needles in the next week or so. The blankets are all done. Knit Picks has accepted them for their independent designer program. So I'm super tick tickled about that. So I think that's going to go through. Now I had to submit the actual patterns. My photographer was on vacation, so we didn't get the pictures taken. So I took pictures on my couch with Amber's quilt that she made me in the background. And then um, I sent those over. But one of the blankets was not knit in knit picks. And I didn't realize at the time that they would only, that they would even accept them. And so now I'm having another one knit in knit picks yarn um, for a sample. So the, I've gotten four out of the five ready to go. And so the blankets will be done. And then I, you know, they're kind of on their way. The patterns are ready. I had to do a application for each individual pattern, which took me half the day on Friday to knit picks instead of just, I thought I could just do one as a collection. That's what it said in the email. But then the lady got back to me and she's like, you didn't fill this out correctly. And I was like, well, it says if I want them to be a collection, submit it as one. But then I didn't want to be sassy with her because I want to work with them. So I was like, I'll do five of them. So it's, it's the same sheets over and over again, the same questions and the same information and just different, different colorways for the blankets and stuff. Um, okay, so... I have a little video to share with you today. Maybe some of you saw it on Instagram, but this was such an interesting way to make a crochet chain. So I will insert it here and then you guys can tell me if you've ever seen anything like this before. this when I was talking about my slipover, my brioche slipover, but I found a list of blown yarns and they have become super popular. I will hold it up again so you all know what I'm talking about. This is the blown yarn where you have like an outer thread and then it's yarn is blown in there. Um, this happens to be the Lanus du Nord Forense luxury line and it is wool and baby alpaca and nylon 126 yards to 50 grams so this is quite lightweight doesn't weigh much at all and so you get 50 grams instead of 100 grams in your ball but i was looking to make um that saturday shrug the sunday shrug the friday shrug that jackie's been doing um, of the Caddy Jacks Knits podcast. And I was out looking, trying to find blown yarn and I wasn't really finding much, but I found a list. And so Barocco Arno, Barocco Mochi, Cascade Yarns Aereo, Cascade Yarns Cantata, Cascade Yarns Luminosa, Lana Grossa Sera, Rowan Alpaca Classic, Juniper Moon Farm Beatrix, Knit Picks Daydream, and Knit Picks Wonder Fluff. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 10 different blown yarns that you can look up to try to find colors that you might like. If you are looking for a blown yarn and you just can't find one, I was also looking one for one in a much cheaper price point than the Lamb and Kid, um, which is really hard to get. It's not only the price point, but she does updates and the colors are gone and the yarn is gone and you can't really get it. And so people are knitting with other things, but... Um, I just thought I would share that. So I'll put this in the show notes. The show notes are always down below. After the title, there's a little arrow. It says more. Click that if, if you ever wanted to look and see um, notes for what I was talking about. Or you can always go to Ravelry and look at the show notes for episode 119. And that list of blown yarns will be over there. What I have been watching. So my mom called and she said, we watched the best show. You have to watch it. So I said, okay, tell me about it. 
she said. It's called Collateral Beauty. So I went over and looked at the description. This is a two, 2016 American fa fantasy drama film. In, it has Will Smith in it. And he is a successful New York advertising executive who suffers a great tragedy, retreats from life where he seeks answers from the universe by writing letters to love, time, and death. So I start watching it and I am thinking, oh my gosh, okay, you know, wow, this is sad and this man is very interesting. I liked what I was watching, but I was like, mom, the, you know, it's okay. It's an okay movie. Um, it was a couple hours long and then um, I talked to her. I was maybe, ha I didn't finish one night. So it was one of those that I felt like I could stop, right? And then the next night I was talking to her um, and I said, oh, I watched that movie. Oh yeah, did you like it? I said, well, I'm not quite done. It's really good. And she said, oh, okay, you know. And then I finished the movie. I called her back. I'm like, mom, it's so good. <laughs> it is so good. But you have to, you have to get to the end. Oh, I talked to someone else about it now and they said, oh, the ending. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. In the last 10 minutes, you know, everything happens. And then, it, the it, yeah, it was so well done. So interesting. So good. It, um, like good, like kind of a moral kind of a, a, a situation. Oh, one of those, you know just really made the whole movie. So highly recommend Collateral Beauty with Will Smith because it is really quirky at, at parts when he is, he's really going crazy. He's really suffering and really struggling and he's writing these letters and they, they, get, it, they get ready to set him up to kind of try to help him. And you're like, oh, this is gonna go horribly wrong, right? And um, yeah, it was really good. So then I started watching Escape to the Chateau and that's on Peacock and somebody had told me to watch it and I don't have Peacock. So I had to spend $5.99 for a month and am I glad I did. This is a couple in England who bought a chateau in France. They're moving from England to France with their two tiny children and she's a character, she's a designer and he's a retired engineer. He is 15 or 18 year old, years older, they've had these two young children um, and they move into the chateau, which they want to turn into a wedding venue and they have to refurb the whole thing, but they need to live in it. And her parents are coming with them to watch the children while they try to refurb it. It's so good, so much fun, tons of seasons. Um, I can't even remember. I'm going to say there are eight seasons, maybe, maybe even more. It, it was so much fun. I was watching it every night. I, I was just really enjoying the couple and all the projects they took on, which I just find fascinating, um, which reminds me, I am still watching Van Wives and I love those girls. <laughs> I want to go to Canada to meet them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If you have not gone over and watched a couple episodes of Van Wives on YouTube, man, those girls are trying. They're just trying. They're they're trying to live in the wilderness. They're trying to make it on their own. They don't always know what they're doing, but they give it a good go and they just have the best attitudes about life and just, you know, being outside and experiencing life. And I liked the van part, right? But then COVID happened and so they bought land in Nova Scotia and they bought this sight unseen, this 15 acres of property with this cabin on it, a 26 year old cabin. And they pulled up and you can't even see the cabin, it's so overgrown. And now they've been living there for two years because of COVID. So they stay and they're out in the country in the middle of nowhere. They're like a two hour, it's a two hour round trip to town um, to just try to live off the land. I And I really like the cabin stuff even better than the van stuff. So. Go watch Van Wives on YouTube. It's it's just lovely. They put out an episode every Sunday morning. Then when my parents were here on Monday night, I said to my parents, let's turn something on. Uh, it was after supper. I think Ross was cleaning up the kitchen. He's not a TV watcher. So we turned on The Snow Girl. It was six episodes and we loved it. So this is a 
originally done in Spanish, so it's dubbed, but it's in it's in English. I always have the subtitles on, so um, I had those on anyway, but it is dubbed in English. The Snow Girl, a young reporter investigates the case of a missing girl with a determination that belies her youth. It turns out that not long before the girl's disappearance, the reporter herself suffered a major trauma, and she knows the pain that the victim's parents are suffering. This was so interesting. We watched all six episodes in one night. It was like 11 o'clock and 1130. And I said, okay, you guys, we have one left. We'll just have to leave it to, for tomorrow night. And my mom said, we can stay up. And so we stayed up. We watched all six episodes. It's really interesting. You follow this girl who's become a journalist and she follows this missing person for years. And, um, and you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know what's happened to her. I mean, they show tiny little flashbacks, but you don't really know what it is. You eventually kind of find out she has kind of a mentor that's helping her and she's overly involved in the project. So anyway, it it's, um, yeah, it was, it was really good. I would highly recommend the snow girl. And then I sat down and watched the next night with my mom and dad, Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. So cute. Oh my gosh. So good. It's a little far-fetched, a little too put together, but oh, you just love her. You just love her. She has this dream and she is going to save her pennies and follow this dream. Oh my gosh. So definitely go watch that movie. Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. That was on Amazon Prime, I think. It was really good. Okay. Things I saw on the internet. There is a new scarf out and I will put a picture in. This is called the Swan Song Scarf by Jasmine Ah Young. It came out in March of 23. It is just lovely. It's a layering piece that features the main theme song of Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Wrap yourself in the complex texture of this scarf, including cables and baubles in a wonderfully scrumptious 100% merino yarn. If you are a music person at all, you have to go take a look at this scarf. I don't know how she did it. It's knit in sport weight. It, yeah, just absolutely incredible. People are so brilliant. Designing people who do things that are above and beyond, over the top. And then the other day on Stephen B's email, if you don't get Stephen B's emails, you really should. I know he sends one every day, but I always open it because they always feature a pattern and that inspires me. But it was the photography show and it is by Christina Villamete. It is stunning. So cool. Look at that. It's like 3D. Oh my goodness just amazing. I don't even know how you make those stitches to make that happen, but that would be really fun to do. I had purchased these little cable locks on the Twice Sheared Sheep website, and then I went back and ordered some more because I gave some away on the podcast. But they had a little video on Instagram the other day how you put this on your um, shawl if you are knitting a long shawl and you push your stitches up to the end and then you slide this up, it keeps all your stitches pushed up toward the end so they don't keep falling down past your circular needle and you have to keep shoving and shoving. And these are brilliant for that. It's just one of those little toggles. You put your needle in there, tighten it up. And I thought, I have to share that. So if I can find the video, I'll stick it in here for you. It was an ad, so I couldn't save it, but um, it was a twice sheared sheep ad and they sell these in different sizes and colors. Um, but I'm sure you could get them at your local yarn store as well. You just tip it over the tip of your needle, but the video was great. I thought, gosh, what a perfect idea, not just to lock your stitches on, but when you're working those long rows on a on a shawl or a scarf and you're always pushing your stuff up, to have them stay up would be just lovely. So time saver for sure, right? I have the weirdest little sleep trick for all of you. I'm on Instagram a lot and I follow this gentleman who is sharing things. Um, can I remember who he is? He is called Motivational Doc 
And he said, take your three fingers and put them on your wrist right here. And then right where that is ending, you have a little pressure point. And you'll find it if you, if you feel right there. There's like a little hole between your muscles and you tap that, push that in 10 times. And then you push it and you hold it in that spot for about a minute, a minute and a half, and watch yourself fall asleep. And I have been doing it and I think it has been working. So I just wanna share with all of you that have trouble falling asleep. He has lots of tips and tricks about um, eating and sleeping and um, maintaining balance and things like that. But three fingers where your pinky is, inside, right inside your wrist, go down, and you'll start to find it. You won't have to use your, there's just a little hole right there. And then you press it, press it, press it. And then you push and hold like a pressure point. And yeah, brilliant. Easy to try when you're falling asleep. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna share that with all of you. We have to do a little bit of a giveaway. I have the lace book to give away this week, and that is going to RYO Knits. She shared her favorite meal, which happened to be some Mexican <laughs> type food, if I remember right. And I used, the, for the first time, I used the YouTube comment picker, and that worked great. I didn't have to count down 73 <laughs> numbers. I just used YouTube comment picker. So that's Rhiannon. Rhiannon, get in touch with your address, and I will send you out that lace book that was gifted to me to give away on the podcast. It's just a beautiful book. Um, so I'm happy that that will be going to someone who really, really wants it. Okay, we took Cody to the vet. He got his shots. Um, he was pretty happy camper after that. Now we have to give him those little syringes for his, I don't know what it is. Can't even remember heartworm and I don't know, all the things. He's got to get all the little precautions and whatever, but he is growing like a weed. So he had gained a pound and a half in the first week, gotten much, much bigger, taller, wider, like we can see it. He's going to be a huge dog, but he is growing really fast. So that's what we called the vet. And we said, gosh, you know, he seems famished all the time. Um, should we up his food? She said, sure. And now we have a dog that's pooping all the time, all the time, six times a day. So maybe too much food, maybe too many treats because um, we're trying to train. So we're using his dog food and some little freeze-dried liver treats um, to train. So maybe he's just getting too much. So, you know, we're learning too. <laughs> Lots of things to learn. Um, his fur is so soft and he makes me laugh and he's darling, but he's also very aggressive with me. He likes to bite my clothes and bite what I have on when he gets overstimulated outside if he gets the zoomies, I know we need to come in and have crate time now. He needs to have more downtime. Um, she said that they, you know, they should be sleeping 18 hours a day. I'm like, oh no, he's up 18 hours a day. Like we're taking a minute. She's like, yeah, no, way too, way too much. He's growing so much. He's just overly tired. He needs to sleep harder, longer, be in his crate more, you know, to get quiet himself down. So that, that was very helpful. But it's exhausting, you know. I, I stay up late and I'm with him for the last three hours of the night. Ross gets up early. He's with him for the first three hours of the morning. He's taking him for a walk. He's feeding him. He's cleaning the crate when he gets up in the morning. I have not had the pleasure of that job yet. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> Bummer for, <clears throat> for Ross. But, you know, we've had him two weeks. It's only been two weeks. And so um, he's, sub he's settling in. He will kind of come he's learning his name and and that kind of stuff so it's just a lot any of you have ever had a puppy or a new baby <laughs> you know what it's like get them on a schedule keep yourself on a schedule we take him with us a lot if we're going to run errands and stuff we want him to get used to being in his crate like going somewhere so we put our the crate in the truck and then we go and then we take him out and then we come back so that he's just he knows that it's not a punishment he can get in out all the time um and he gets to go see new smell, new things. On Friday, he went to Wisconsin. Um, I needed the day. I said to Ross, I have to get my handouts ready. I have five classes I'm teaching. I need to review my handouts. I need to pack my samples. I need to pack my sweaters. 
I need to go through my, you know, all my notes. And I just, I just need the time to get this done. I said, it's going to just take me days. And so he was going to Wisconsin. We we're supposed to go the week ago, Saturday, um, to get the fishing boat ready. He and his brother are going fishing beginning of May and they're getting a new um, depth finder put in the boat. Um, and so they need to get it out. And so he took Chevy and they, he went to his brother's cabin where they have a shed and he ran it all over and had a great day, drove two hours over and two hours back and just traveled like a little champ. So, you know, that was a lot too. He was very tired when he got home, but they, yeah, they were gone for about half the day. And that was, that was lovely. Cause I got lots of my stuff done. I really sat down and went through all my, so I have only one class left to, to kind of grab stuff for and, I have to pack an extra suitcase and you have never taught five classes in a row. This would be really interesting because they're all three hour classes. So wish me luck on that. Okay, audiobooks of the week. I read Sinister Graves by Marcy Rendon and I'm really liking her books. She's a Minnesota author, Native American, writes about the same um, character. So the main character is Cash Black Bear, and she is an Ojibwe woman who's 19 years old in this particular book, and she's going to college, but she's had a really rough upbringing. And this book takes place in 1970s in Minnesota. A snow melt has sent floodwaters down to the fields of the Red River Valley, which is very typical of what's happening right now, and dragging the body of an unidentified native woman into the town of Ada. The only evidence the medical examiner recovers is a torn piece of paper inside her bra. A hymn written in English and Ojibwe. And then Cash has kind of been partially raised by the town sheriff. He helps her out a lot. And so she helps him with... Um, a lot of investigative stuff and she's interested in criminology and yeah I really I really enjoyed it it's a it was about six hours so not a very long book and that I think is the third one in that series of the Cash Black Bear um, book so I would recommend that then I listened to a visit from the goon squad which um, was the winner of the Pulitzer Prize uh, by Jennifer Egan and I was not a fan at all so I had just finished The Goldfinch, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, 32 hours long. Loved it, right? Thought it was great. I really liked it. This one was just a dud from the beginning. I didn't get into the characters. I couldn't concentrate on like character development. It jumped around from one character to the next. Um, I went out and read some reviews and it seemed to me like people either loved it and thought it was the best or hated it with a passion. I kind of fell in the middle. I kept trying and trying and I, I just was like, this is just not that great. I'm, I'm just not loving it. Um, I kept, I stop and not listen. And then I, that's when I know that it, you know, a book is just not. So I got almost to the end and I finally, it, they, Libby took it back. It just took so long for me to get there. I was like, you can have it. I just, I'm not loving this. Um, and then I, Listen to the love hypothesis in the last two days and it completely you know flipped my reading I love as Allie Hazelwood it's a romance it's light-hearted but there's good character development like you care about the characters you know that they're probably going to get together um but you're not sure how it's going to happen and she does a really nice job um she's a scientist the author is actually a scientist and um works in academia and so um, that's what the book is like settled on. And so you, you really have some depth there, some knowledge of, of procedures and labs and academia and um, yeah, things like that. So I found it really good and I had no problem listening to like four hours of it yesterday. I was, I was packing and doing things around the house and getting things done and yeah, it, it was quite good. So I would recommend Allie Hazelwood. I've read a couple of hers as well. I saw a little quote this week and that's what I'm going to be, what I'm going to kind of wrap up it with and what I'm going to share. And it said, can you say, I like myself? Kind of makes you think, doesn't it? Can you just say that to yourself and sit with it? Do you? Do you like the way you behave, the things you do? Or are you constantly belittling yourself, tearing yourself down, not being happy with yourself on the inside? 
right? Because we can all present so differently on the outside. So a little thought, thought of the week this week, just whether or not you can kind of sit with that. Kind of give yourself a hug, heart, heart yourself. You only have you, right? Um, so yeah, I thought that was kind of profound. I have um, another giveaway to do because the winner from episode 112 has still never responded. And I have reached out on Ravelry and Instagram and tried and tried. And so I'm just going to re-give that prize away this time. So it was the little tin. Um, it had a little wolf head on it. And then there was a little fox pin. It's really cute. Um, I got it from Twice Your Cheap. And I just want to give that away. It's the last prize. I sent out all the other prizes. I did have a couple people who didn't get in touch, but I had their addresses. And I was like, I am sending your stuff out. So you got a surprise in the mail, uh, Polly and Margie. <laughs> but I had your addresses and I was like, I'm just going to get this out. So all the prizes have been shipped except for next week's now. Um, and I'm going to give away that uh, tin and that pin. Let me know in the comments down below whether or not you celebrate Easter or Passover if you have any uh, traditions, do you do an Easter egg hunt? Or are you all about candy and bunny rabbits? <laughs> or um, do you have a Christian tradition? Do you go to church? Um, do you have brunch? Do you see family? Um, just share whether or not you have um, any type of, of, some people celebrate the spring equinox. You know, just let me know if that's something that you celebrate or not. And then I'll be giving away that little gift um, that wasn't claimed last time for your comments this week. Okay, I am teaching a bunch in the next couple of weeks and days here. So I, I taught at Stephen B, uh, Latvian Braids. That was a lovely class that went really well. I had a great group of people that I'm teaching this coming Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in Loveland, Colorado. Then I come back and I'm teaching in, in Stillwater at Darn It Anyway. Um, that class is full. That's my When Knitting Goes Wrong Fixing Mistakes class. Then I am teaching at Stephen B. I'm doing a Friday event uh, at the end of the month on April 26th. That's my Skeins to Skeins trivia game. And they're having a whole event that night. They're going to run two different groups. Um, they're going to have activities and things like that. And then I'm teaching fixing mistakes in the Carver County Library System the end of April. And that class is full too. And I think there's a waiting list. Um, so yeah, I have quite a bit coming up here in April and then I start teaching beginning knitting in May and then the kind of the last Corey's story and the little bit of news I have is that we have canceled my shoulder replacement surgery so um with the new puppy and the jaw trouble and the new furnace and the parents coming and our life in general the doctor's office had called asked to move it up by a month because my doctor is moving to Illinois and I just can't do it. I can't fit it in in May. And I kind of scheduled for the end of May. And we're just finding that with Chevy. And he's going to be a big dog. And he's not going to be trained in the next six weeks, four weeks to six weeks. That it is just not a good time. We, I have to get a new doctor. I'm going to have to reschedule. I have to figure things out. I am managing. I'm doing some... Um, shoulder exercises and um, trying to not use it, but trying to also um, strengthen my bicep um, a little bit. So um, yeah, I'm canceling it. I was going to have it June 8th and then it was moved to May 7th and then it was moved to May 31st. And yeah, my doctor is leaving June 1st and we just can't do it. I said to my husband, even if you take a week off for the shoulder, I, I won't be I can't have a dog jump on me. Uh, yeah, it's a big surgery and a big recovery. And I'm getting by right now. I shouldn't probably wait, but I, yeah, it's just too much. Like we just can't do another surgery. So I will be canceling that. And then that frees up our summer. We'll get Chevy trained and then he can go for training. We usually send him away for two weeks. That's what we did with Cody um, to a local place and, um, and we can do that in the fall. And then I could have my surgery during that time after yarn over. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to apply to go back to South Dakota. Um, 
that Watertown is having, or the South Dakota Knitters Guild had it at Watertown. I did get the application. It's not due till May, so I have to think about whether or not I want to go back there in September. Um, I did not get into the um, Texas one. I keep applying to Texas, but I didn't get in. Um, so, yeah, I'm putting that off. I'm just, it just, we just, sometimes you just need to have your life be <laughs> slowed down and calm for a little bit of time before you jump into the next thing. And yeah, we'll just deal with it as we go forward. I think that that's all I have for you this week. Quick, short, sweet, try to get it done. I will get Chevy and do a little introduction. Bye. Come in for your hug. Love you all. I always say that, but I do really mean it. <laughs> See you next time. Here he is. Here's little Chev. Say hello. Say hi. Look at how big he is already. I'm going to try to hold him up. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I should weigh you. I, the last time I weighed him, it was like 13 and a half pounds. So I bet he's 15. Uh, yeah, he's just, he's very fluffy. So he looks a lot bigger than he is. When we've given him a bath, he's quite skinny. He used to be like Cody. When we give him a bath, his hair would all flatten out. But when he's just running around, he looks like a little chunk because he's got quite long fur, as you can see. And it's so soft. Just so soft. Yes. Are you just a cutie patootie? Oh, ho. yes. Are you being so gentle, Chev? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we call you little Chev. Or little Effer, <laughs> depending on the mood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's getting super big. Look at those paws. Yeah. Look at those paws. Yeah. Is that your dad? Come on. Yeah.